Welcome to the actor's side today, the star, certainly one of the stars, of the Goldbergs, Wendy McClendon Covey. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you for coming to the actor's side. Thank you for highlighting the actor's side. <laughs> what torture you put yourself through to be in this <laughs> profession. <laughs> Listen, I, I used to work a nine to five desk job, so that's torture. Uh -huh. This is pure pleasure, all yeah. of it, all of it. Yeah. Were you always into acting? Did you always know you were going to do this? Or is this something you just sort of stumbled into? I knew from the time I had conscious thought that I wanted to do this. Good for you. But yeah. I had no encouragement once it was time to actually pick a career. Which, by the way, you know, I think your parents, when, when you want to do something that's outside of their comfort zone, of course they're going to freak out. Yeah. a little bit. So for a long time I was aimless and trying to go to school and picking majors that had nothing to do with anything that I was interested in. I didn't <laughs> know why I was going to school and I would try to sneak off to auditions. Uh -huh. And you know because I didn't have an agent I was going through drama log or backstage west to get these stupid auditions so sometimes I would go sometimes I would drive right past the building because <laughs> it looked so shady. You know <laughs> and I thought well I'd rather not get murdered today, so <laughs> I just won't go on this audition. But yeah, so finally, um, I I got up the nerve to go to the Groundlings. Ah, yes. And that's what really sealed the deal for me. And I thought before you did that, yeah. Did you do a number of auditions though? Did you ever did. go in those buildings? I did. I okay. did. And sometimes I'd get the job, and it would be you know like a non-union commercial or a. Uh -huh you know, a pilot presentation for some terrible TV <laughs> idea that was never going to go anywhere. Right. Um, is it still you know, a horrible process auditioning? Is that no. just a, No. I like auditioning now. Really? I don't mind it now. Yeah. Because, well now I'm at the level where if, if I get sent on an audition, it's a real audition. <laughs> it's not <laughs> for some crazy, you know, experimental thing to, you know, get girls to come and try on different outfits. Right, yeah. Um, now it's real. That happens. <laughs> um, but yeah, now, it, now it's for something that will actually go somewhere. And I, yeah. don't, I don't, I know a lot of people hate auditions. They hate and it. And I I've used done. to hate it. Yeah. But now, you know, if you really just think of it as an acting class, mm -hmm. then it's great. Yeah. Pressure's off. <laughs> Probably not going to get it anyway, so who cares? My yeah. life's pretty good. Yeah. I'll just go and do it, and if they don't book me for this one thing, they'll think of me for when my flavor comes up. You know. And you, I, you've done so many interesting things, and I, so many people have come out, they talk about the groundlings, which you just mentioned. You know, the groundlings is a breeding ground for so <laughs> many great comedy talents. It is, it is. And um, How'd you get there? I saw... I started watching shows there, and I thought, oh my God, if I could ever do anything like that, I, I would just feel so accomplished. Like, I, I just couldn't believe what I was watching on that stage. So, it, from the time I saw my first show right. to the time I made my friend call and sign me up because I couldn't do it, my hand was shaking too hard, <laughs> that was four years. Wow. So it really? took me four years to get the courage to sign up. And then once I started going, I loved it so much. I thought, gosh, I don't, I don't even care if I ever make money doing this. I have to do this. I have to have this in my life. I have to be around creative people. I have to have this much fun. Yeah. If I can't, then life is just not worth living. I, yeah. I cannot just live Monday through Friday looking forward to the weekends. I have to have some kind of magic in my life like this. So um, I thought, well, I'll take class there and I'll keep going until they ask me not to come back. <laughs> Which is always a possibility. You yeah. know? Or if, I, if I'm really sucking, you know, at least I'm self-aware enough to know when, I, when I'm terrible. Right. Did you uh, take well to improv style? Is that a good style of comedy for you? That Well, you know what? I took to... Um, the, the style of long form. Yeah. I love improvising dialogue. The games, eh, I learned them because I had to, but I don't love improv games. Yeah. But I have to say it's been the most useful thing that I've ever learned because 
I've worked on a lot of shows and a lot of movies where they do ask you to improvise. Ah, yeah. And if you don't have that skill, you know, you're just you're just plugging up the works. <laughs> <laughs> you're not giving anything. You're giving your scene partners nothing to work with, and you're yeah. giving your editor nothing to work with. So. Yeah. Um, I am really grateful that I learned how to. I would imagine working in sitcoms, as you've done uh, 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 at least uh, two very successful sitcoms so far, and uh, others, that that comes in really handy. The way those things are turned out weekly and uh, oh evolve. yes, it gives you it gives you a work ethic, a really yeah. um, that that regimented writing style and. And the ability to take notes, which is also extremely important in this business. If you can't take notes, like an objective person, yeah. and you get all emotional and argumentative, no one wants to work with you. Right. <laughs> you know, and you're really you're really screwing yourself because yeah. there is always a better way to do something. Uh, at what point did Bridesmaids come along? Because you mentioned Annie Mumolo, obviously Kristen Wiig, who both co-wrote Bridesmaids, Melissa McCarthy, who was in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you all wound up in that movie one way or another. Was it destined because you were all like out of the ground leans, or how did that come about? Well, I, I did. we did the first table read for Bridesmaids in 2007. Oh. At that point, I was still in the company. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual auditions, didn't come about till 2010. So, mm -hmm. you know, they had said, well, we wrote this part with you in mind. And, and they I wrote it for well, you? Well, I mean, with me in mind. There's, Rita? There's never any <laughs> guarantees, you okay. know? So when it came time to audition, I thought it was nice that I got a call. Like, oh, that's very sweet. But I didn't think I'd get it. And, you know, I, I went in on a Saturday. I wasn't feeling funny. I didn't feel like I hit it out of the park. But I thought, well, that's really really decent of them to bring me in. That's very sweet. But then I got a call back and I was like, oh, well that's very, very decent of them. <laughs> I just, I never thought that I would, that it would go my way. Right. Because I wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And well, I'm still not, but <laughs> like everybody in the world wanted to be in that movie. Yeah, so every, sure. every call back I would go on, there'd be a waiting room full of recognizable people. And I'd oh, think, no. well, this was fun. <laughs> You know, at least I got this far. Right. So, you know. And you got it. I got it. Yes, I heard everything thanks to Barry's stupid giant ear. Our Hollywood dreams are back on the table. <laughs> Mom, you gotta stop. I just lost a real job. You know what else is real? You walking me down the red carpet at the Academy Awards. To be clear, if I ever get a job in show business, I am not taking you as my date to anything. Of course you are. <laughs> I'm super not. Well, who else are you going to take? Uh, my wife. Oh, it's cool. She'll understand. No, she won't. I'll talk to her. She'll get it. You stay away from her. Seriously, she didn't sign up for this. So what? I'm the only one who believes in you, but I have to read about your successes in People magazine like some poor slob at a dentist office? I'll tell you before the article comes out, okay? If I pay back the arcade, can I go to the Oscars then? You can ride with me and my wife in the limo, but you can't go in. I'll find a way. This is crazy because now you're obviously playing a real character too, uh, yeah. Mrs. Goldberg. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Adam she Goldberg's very real. mother. I mean, the show is named after the creator of the show. And so this is a added pressure, or was it just sort of fun to dive into playing someone uh, whose mother still exists? Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard not to feel pressure because you don't want to insult anybody, but you yeah. want to stay true to what they're writing. Yeah. And... I just felt like after the first time I saw the home movies of that family, I thought, I could do this. <laughs> I want to do this. I would watch this show. Ah, cool. If, these, if we're going to play it like this, then yes. Please, count me in. Yeah. So um, I didn't meet her officially until about 10 episodes in. Oh. And, you know, she's intimidating. <laughs> It's a little intimidating, but she likes me, so that's nice. And he's reading this, our Adams, it's all coming from his life. It's all coming, all of this stuff sort of happened, I yeah. guess. Or, yeah, a lot of it did. A lot of it, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll use certain things as a point of departure for a bigger story. But 
he really did have his pops, played by George Siegel, who right. lived, not lived with them, but was over all the time. And he and, and his pops were like best friends. Oh, wow. And he would make his own movies. He was an indoor kid. He was not a sports kid. So he liked writing, making his own movies, making his own props. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I, I love <laughs> a creative kid like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And he would, he would get everybody in the neighborhood to be in his, in his movies. And thank God he did. I, I wow. love watching those at the end of every episode. I know. Yeah. It's, such a, it's a very unique show. Set in a very unique decade. Mm -hmm. um, the 80s is back, as you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess the, <laughs> the prime... I've noticed. <laughs> yes, the prime audience is there watching this show yeah. and relating to it. And yeah. it's sort of, I remember the 80s, and I kind of go like, wow, we really did live like that, I guess. We really had that, that <laughs> kind of optimism that, yeah. you know, this is the best it's ever going to get. Yeah. Technologically, we are... We are just killing it with these Walkmen <laughs> and VCR as big as a coffin. Like, we are practically living on Mars. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. You know, there is something nostalgic for everybody about the time when, when they hit puberty and felt the most awkward. Like, the, the times between 12 and 18 are so painful and poignant and and great, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, I think it, it really strikes a chord with people. So kids can watch it with their parents and nobody's bored. Everybody's enjoying it. You know? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's, yeah. it's, and it's like going into season five, I guess. Uh, going into season five. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, a, that's a, a, a big run you're having there on ABC. Just, doesn't happen that much anymore. So no, it doesn't. For a, for a show to catch on, they, they come on and you know so fast, all different times of the year, and yeah. if they don't make it in two episodes, they're off. They're right? off, yeah. Don't, this they one, don't give you time to build an audience, yeah. necessarily. Well, there's anymore, something that so. people relate to, clearly. Yeah. And you know, we've talked comedy, comedy, comedy here, but I, I wanted to ask you also, before we go, uh, about your, your very fine dramatic actress, too. I've seen you do. Uh, a Thank couple you. of things, and I know you just uh, did a picture called Felt, too, right? I did, yes. Which is yeah. about the deep throat guy in Watergate. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait to see how that turned out. I, yeah. it, it's not um, it's not a lighthearted romp of a movie. Yeah, I okay. would imagine. Um, Liam Neeson is fantastic. Oh, wow. Well. As Mark Felt. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Um, the story is is incredible and it's gonna tell a side of the story that people probably didn't know. Mm -hmm. This was a very private man and had to be because he was with the FBI. So right, yeah. we're gonna get into the FBI and I play one of the only women in the movie. Um, Who do you play? His, I play Carol Schutte, his long-suffering secretary. Ah. And again, you never know how these things are gonna edit out, but think about a woman who works for the FBI. Yeah. What's that like? Yeah. She's still got to wear a dress every day. Right. She still has to adhere to certain manners and, and mores of the time. And she probably went as far as a person can go as a female in the FBI in 1972, yeah. you know, and that is secretary <laughs> to the most powerful man. Yeah. So she probably knows just as much as anybody, oh. but can't say anything. With all the things going on with the FBI and the CIA and everything today, this movie will be yeah. one to watch for yeah. what it said about that time and what it might say about times we are living in. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the people that, that go, on, go and work for these organizations with the best of intentions. Yeah. And sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut <laughs> for the good, for the greater good. Yeah. Well, once again, playing real life so well and making it uh, relatable <laughs> to everybody. Thank you so much for coming Thank out here, Wendy. You're great. You're fun. Thanks. You are. <laughs> <laughs>